Are you interested in having your kids learn a lot? You know, build up their reading culture from a young age. Well, with us on the show today is an educationist who actually has a big heart for children. Uh, Olga Michael, welcome to Hello Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. We hear that you're the founder of Bloomberg. Bloom Readers, rather, an online bookstore. Yes. Now, we find that we're starting, I, I think that this is actually a, a, a very better suited time to have a conversation like this. Mm -hmm. Seeing as last week Thursday was World Book Day, and it's important that we incorporate reading into our habits. We're starting to see that it's shifting. It's not as intense as it was back in the day. So what would you say picked your own interest in reading and in education? Did you have a background in it? Yes. I studied um, English and literature for my undergrad, and I've always just loved books. I was, my dad cultivated that habit in us. He always bought us books, comics, different things, he encouraged us to read a lot. So I just picked it up from there, and now I see that kids these days, they don't really read, and so I just try to help them. And why would you say this is? Well, we don't really have reading culture in this part of the world. Everybody's just on the move, and you know, maybe you just look at books like I don't know. Got Michael here, and we're looking at how to make it easy for kids to learn. She is the founder of an e commerce online site titled Bloom Readers, and she's explained that you know, she developed a passion for reading not just from her undergrad, but because her father cultivated this habit in her. And I think it's very important that you mentioned that bit because mm. parents do have a huge role to play yes. in teaching children how to read. At what age? Would you say that a child should be taught to read? Some people wait until the child can talk or speak. Some people say you actually start reading to the child in the belly because he has a psychological connection or a psychological explanation to that. Well, I don't know about that, but you should start reading to your child very early. Even if they can't talk, don't wait till when they can't talk. It helps them build confidence. At the age of two, three months, even if they don't really know what you're saying, they can put auditory connections to what you're saying. They can try to repeat the sounds of what you're saying. And you know, over time, when they get to nine months, one year, they can now visualize what you're saying. They can put images and sounds to what you're saying. So there's really no, it's, it's good to start early. Okay, now I'm interested in knowing why you chose kids, because a lot of the time we have authors who are writing books about history, you know, talking about epic stories from past times. But now you chose kids, and I'm sure you're doing these stories too, but, you know, in kid-friendly form. Why? Why the kids? Kids, because you start them young. Kids grow up to be the adults in the society today. So engage them, introduce them to reading on time. It helps boost their confidence, their imagination, and they grow up to become better individuals, you know. So kids, you start with them because... They grow up to be the adults within your society. Today. At what age did At what age did you f picture your first book to be written? Oh. As a child, now. Oh, <laughs> I I can't really say. Have you like, written books? No, I'm working on it. Okay. I'm trying to gather stories and experiences that people can relate to. I don't just want to do fiction. Right. So I work with a lot of children. I ask them things, so it's in the work. Now let's talk about practical ways to help children read. And when I'm talking about reading this time, I'm not just talking about, you know, reading your books. I'm talking of actually putting letters and alphabets together and making sense of it. Back in the day, we didn't understand that there was such a thing called dyslexia. Now we understand that dyslexia is the inability for you know, people to be able to assimilate as easier as, you know, as easy as other people would. So we have some young children. I, I mean, there was a time that I was tutoring a little boy, and I told him to spell orange, and it started from WK. And I was wondering what is happening. Now I know better. Now I understand that some people just can't learn like that. So have you ever experienced cases where you have a child that has extreme learning difficulties? If yes, how are you able to handle it? Okay, I haven't had that experience, but it's quite simple. That's why from an early age, you help them. There are things called place cards and pictures. You know, you cut out all these things and try to link their visual to their audio. Just repeat these things to them. And you can help them build their reading skills by giving them things to read. It doesn't have to be so formal, like schoolwork and everything. You give them materials. If you're going to dinner, make your child read the menu of, you know, it encourages them. If you're going to the movies, encourage your child to read the movie listing. 
the game, let them read the preview of the games and, you know, it, it just helps them this informal way, you understand? So also for kids like three, two, one, you can cut out images, mm. you understand, photographs, attach it to their room, just randomly tell them, oh, orange, if they come, oh, mom, dad, I want an orange. Make them pick out the orange from the, do you understand? Like they have a picture already of what this is. So let them put the sound and the visual together. It helps them. But there should not be so much pressure on them to get it right all the time. Over time, consistency is key and they'll do well, they'll pick up. As an educationist, um, there's always been this talk in recent times concerning the Montessori style of educating children. And um, um, a lot of parents are actually saying they would love it to be nationally recognized, you know, and applied even in government schools. Do you agree? Because they say it's more engaging for kids and they get to learn faster and better. So would you say that is true? Or do you have better styles that you feel should be applied for children in Nigeria in um, learning? Sorry, please explain shift. I really don't know. What the Montessori shift. style of teaching in schools where kids, like you just mentioned, are being taught by being shown articles of, you know, real S sounds, um, more like sounds, yes, and also objects of what they yeah. want to communicate about. Like you mentioned the orange. Yeah. Telling a child to pick the orange, showing a child what an orange is actually, and actually asking them about it. Or saying letter O, uh, O is or. So yeah. instead of saying O, like we were taught, yeah. they are taught O, or, yeah, or for course. orange. Yeah, you of know, course. A, apple. So they're not yeah. taught A to Z, they are taught A, B, yes, that's So actually, do you think that's a lot better than our style when we're younger and taught A to Z? That is definitely a lot better, teaching them the phonetics than the oral a for a as an apple so when you teach them the phonetics even when they come across words that you when you tell them words that they don't know because of the background of the phonetics they have they can they can easily follow that and spell even if they are not correct they can follow the phonetics to spell and you know they get better that way yes the montessori system is definitely better than what we had back in our days mm. and at what age does it become absolutely impossible for you to learn how to read. We've seen different articles about maybe a grandma or a grandpa in Uganda or in Kenya going to school to learn how to read at the age of 79, 80. So is there really an age limit? No, there's no age limit. It's a continual thing. If you have the interest, it's a continual thing. There's no age limit. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Olga Michael. How can people much. follow you on social media? Okay. I have an Instagram handle called Bloom Readers. That's for now. And I'm working on my website. So. All right. Please follow Bloom Readers. So Bloom Readers on Instagram is the account to follow if you want to contact Olga Michael with further questions that we've not been able to cover. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.